Video posted to social media shows the moment looters were stealing brand new cars and driving them off the lot. Some of them stopping to burn out the tires on the way. Um, how many vehicles? Right now we're thinking 50. Stripping cars of their parts and their VIN numbers. An operation we've been calling Operation Hellcat Mike, uh, centered around one of the main figures in this case. Deputies say they began investigating a ring of suspects led by Michael Wilson, a.k.a. Hellcat Mike. Listen, I understand y'all little ignorant ninjas want a Hellcat more than you want air in your lungs or blood in your veins. Well, on the very least, at least a Hellcat engine in your car. And understand that there are legitimate ways of doing things, but this right here is just not. It is a, I don't know if it's a swinging gate or rolling gate, but it is a secure gate. Um, they were able to get in there, but to get a vehicle out, they were trying to pry open, crash through. They had used a, uh, one of the new vehicles that was in the lot they had access to. It was a truck. They tried to crash through the gate. They were unsuccessful. And that's, um, any, any, any means that they, were, that they were trying to gain access into this facility, they would do. This is, this is a great, uh, great opportunity you know, to show the public that what goes on behind the scenes in our law enforcement career. You know, and an investigation that is this lengthy does take time. You know, you're looking right at a year for this. But ultimately, all these arrests were made. We still have Mr. Kenneth Stick, uh, sorry, Stackhouse that is wanted. And I just want to reassure the public that, you know, we're, as, a, as a law enforcement officer, we're here to help. Operation Hellcat Mike. In the case of a person authorities are calling Hellcat Mike, he ran an organization specializing in targeting Hellcats and other high horsepower Dodge vehicles, meticulously stripping them of their drivetrain components and beyond repurposing them for the construction of entirely new vehicles. So this is kind of crazy. And they were, of course, selling them uh, via Facebook Marketplace, just like the dumb criminals they are. 33 year old Juan Luna. They say he's wanted in connection to multiple car thefts across Houston. His latest victim, baseball legend Reggie Jackson. They broke into the place where I'm staying and busted the windows out and stuff like that. The former Yankee slugger, now a special assistant with the Astros, spoke to us tonight from batting practice on the road in Arlington. Jackson, a huge car collector, reported his custom 2022 Dodge Charger Hellcat stolen from a parking garage in downtown Houston last week. The car's worth $170,000. To take in the stolen vehicles, take in the stolen parts, and then physically do the work of hooking things up and, and actually making it all work. Ethan's job is Ethan was strictly a thief. Uh, his it was his job to go out and get the vehicles, get the parts, and then bring them to them uh, to convert into, you know, to turn a regular charger into a Hellcat or a Red Eye or whatever some of the other names are. Just crazy. You see the engine you want, you pay ten, fifteen thousand dollars for that thing, um, and you have no clue where it's even coming from. You don't know who the rightful owner is. Is it stolen? Are police looking for it? Turns out they are, and now you're part of a much bigger investigation. By the time I came in and seen a gap, I knew something was wrong. The motor is a big ticket on that vehicle. It's a $10,000 motor by itself. The engine then has to come out of the car and you're out your ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Ladies and gentlemen, this happens much more than you probably think. Sometimes when we come to the salvage auction, we find stolen stripped Hellcats. And this time we found, well, the rest of the car. We have the complete front and rear subframe dropouts. The Brembo brakes are still there. Pretty much everything's intact it was all just removed from the car and i guess they found it in the chop shop or something so what these guys are doing is you know they'll go get a hellcat engine five six seven thousand dollars they'll take that engine and the components i'm assuming drop it in the 300 body maybe a scat pack body um old school magnum i've been seeing a whole lot of um old school magnums hellcat powered engines so uh, let's be honest you know the reason why people are doing this is they they want to cut corners, right? Nobody wants to pay $88,000 for a Hellcat Charger or Challenger. Nobody wants to pay $98,000 for a Red Eye Challenger or Charger. I mean, I do get it, you know? So obviously people are going to try to cut corners where they can. So what they're going to do is, you know, maybe they'll go grab a SRT Charger body that's already paid off. Put Pull that 6.1 out, pull that 5.7 out, if it even has a 5.7. You know, they'll drop a Hellcat engine in that thing, $6,000. So it does make sense when you do think about it, but this is how people are getting themselves into situations that they probably don't want to be in, you know. If it's done legitimately, it's just smart. It's just good business. It's simply good business. But when you're dealing with these shady, these weird mechanics, I mean, shit is bound to hit the fan. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we are wrapping up about a, well, we, we never truly wrapped them up, but uh, the latest in, in about a one-year investigation that's to this point, 
uh, an operation we've been calling Operation Hellcat Mike, uh, centered around one of the main figures in this case. And we'll bring up a graphic here in a little bit with, with most of these names. So the, the central location of this is a chop shop that we hit uh, back in February at 1039 Bassey Road, number, nine, number 39. It's kind of in an industrial park, which is where uh, Hellcat Mike, AKA, or Mike Wilson, AKA Hellcat Mike, uh, was operating out of. And what this ring of suspects was doing was they were stealing vehicles uh, and then stealing engines from engines and other parts from, from other vehicles. So what they would do is they would steal a uh, regular run-of-the-mill Dodge Charger, but then also steal a Hellcat, which is a high-end Dodge Charger, they would take everything out of that more high-end vehicle, put it on the lower end, and then so next thing you know, you've got a, a, a Hellcat that you can resell. And these guys were reselling these vehicles at about uh, half the price of regular retail. And they had a pretty sophisticated operation going. But I'll go ahead and if we can bring up the graphic. So some of these people are already in custody. Some of them are fugitives at this moment, and I'll give you the information on who's who right now. First suspect that you see here is Mike Wilson. Uh, that is Hellcat Mike. Uh, 37 years of age. He's charged with engaging in organized criminal activity and uh, several other charges. So Hellcat Mike at this moment is actually in jail in Brazoria County on some warrants out of, uh, he had been in, in, in there for, for warrants out of Guadalupe County, but now additionally we've added our charges on him from here. Prior to our charges being added, he was already there on a $750,000 bond in Brazoria County. So I don't know that he's going to be going anywhere anytime soon. But what we know is he was our first person that came on our radar about a year ago. Uh, we got information that he was selling high dollar vehicles on social media with stolen, and, uh, with stolen and swap parts on those vehicles. So we began watching. Uh, what we started doing was, was identifying uh, workers of his, I guess lower ranking members of his or criminal organization uh, and started targeting them. Uh, what, the, the people we were able to find are, were George Santibanez, he's 33 years of age. Miguel Santibanez, he's 19 years of age. And then uh, also uh, Jodeci Santibanez, who is not, he's not on this page, he's on another, on another page. So let me start out by saying, George Santibanez is the uncle of Miguel and Jodeci, who you'll see also. These four suspects were all arrested uh, yesterday uh, without incident. And uh, the, the other names that we'll be giving you are um, still at large here shortly. But here's what they were doing, was they were stealing uh, PC, PCMs, uh, which I guess, for lack of a better term, that is a, a part of, a br of the brain of the vehicle. Uh, they were also utilizing onboard diagnostics, so these, these uh, diagnostic readers that you get from mechanics, they were able to, to basically take, take and swap these onto the, onto the vehicles as well to make them work. You know, nowadays it's not just a matter of, like it used to be with the old cars, you just take an engine and put it in the other car and you make it work. You actually have to have the brain of it to, to fully convert. And so that's what these guys were doing, is using these, these uh, other components that they were able to steal. In some instances, we had, we had cases where uh, dealerships would have nothing stolen out of the vehicle other than that PCM. So to the dealership, they would just pay to replace it, and yet unbeknownst to them, we're hitting a chop shop and finding this vehicle with that PCM that was stolen off of a lot somewhere, unbeknownst to the dealership, they never reported it, they just replaced it and went on with, went on with doing, doing their business. But this, what you see up here, is the way they were swapping out a lot of these engines. Again, it's not like in the old days where you just take the engine out of the car. In these instances, they're ripping the, or removing the whole front end of the vehicle and swapping the whole front end and putting it onto another vehicle. And it's basically a plug and play. You plug it in and it starts to work, um, you know, for lack of a better term. Uh, so what we know about the, about the suspects involved, if we can go back to the, the graphic with, the, with the, the names. So what we know is George, Miguel, and Jodeci all were workers. In other words, it was their job to take in the stolen vehicles, take in the stolen parts, and then physically do the work of you know, hooking things up and, and actually making it all work. Ethan's job is Ethan was strictly a thief. Uh, his it was his job to go out and get the vehicles, get the parts, and then bring them to them. 
uh, to convert into, you know, to turn a regular charger into a Hellcat or a Red Eye or whatever some of the other names are, the SRTs that, that we've been, uh, that I've learned a lot about these chargers in the last couple of days here. Uh, there's another suspect that is currently, uh, Augustine, is he still wanted? Or is he? Okay, so another suspect, if we can go to Augustine. This suspect here is also still wanted uh, in connection with this case. Uh, Agustin Gallegos, he's 18 years of age. Um, he also came on our radar as we were, as we were going through the, uh, the, the cases, or the, the uh, social media and, and various means of communication that we were able to seize off of these suspects. He is uh, currently wanted for, because of conspiring uh, to steal and swap uh, you know, some of these components. So if anybody has information on where this guy or the other guy that we have, Jodeci, if we can show Jodeci's, uh, Jodeci Santibanez is also wanted. He's got several other additional charges, engaging in organized criminal activity, theft of a vehicle, unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. As I mentioned, Jodeci was one of the ones that physically worked in the shop, and it was his job to take the stolen cars, stolen components, and physically put them together. Uh, again, he is the brother of Miguel Santibanez, and the nep both of them are the nephews of George Santibanez. That label that you see there, so these are actually, a lot of these are wrapped vehicles. So they would steal a vehicle and not even bother to repaint it. They would put a vehicle wrap of a different color on it. And that uh, big Hellcat symbol, uh, that was actually Hellcat Mike's uh, trademark. Uh, so while that design that you see there is in fact a Dodge factory design, the fact that it's blown up, on a, on a vehicle wrap, that's something that we believe that this ring did. And so, you know, we're, at, we're saying this to say that if anybody out there has a neighbor, lives in an apartment complex, works with somebody that has a big Hellcat symbol on their car like that, we kind of want to know about it. And we'd like you to give us a call, 210-335-6000. It's quite possible these people are driving around in stolen cars for years at a time. So let me give you some of the dollar amounts that we're dealing with. Right now, what, of what we've recovered, we've recovered probably three quarters of a million dollars in, in recovered cars and recovered parts. But what we know is that based upon some of the information that we have, uh, there is probably in the millions dollars worth of, of stolen cars that are out there that were part of this case, that were bought and sold by these guys and are still out there. And some of them are going to look like this. 